What's up guys and welcome to part 4 of Move to PC Gaming. This video is all about choosing the right parts for your machine. Get them right and you'll end up with a PC that you'll be happy with and will last you for years to come. But if you cut a few corners or if you spend a bit much then you might be disappointed with the product you end up with. So how much should you actually be spending on a gaming PC? Well you need to set yourself a budget. How much is the right amount to spend for your personal circumstances? What do you want from a PC? How long do you want it to last? How long do you want it to play games for? Etc. Set yourself a budget and stick to it. If you spend too much then you're going to be disappointed that you've spent too much. But if you don't spend enough you might kind of kick yourself later that that your PC doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. There are many different important parts in a PC and to be honest you can't really cut many corners so you need to know what each part does and you need to make sure that each one is tailored towards your budget. If you build your own PC then you have more control over what goes into it because obviously you're choosing every single different component in your machine. If you use a system builder then sometimes the prices might seem quite low and that might be because they're cutting corners that they should be so make sure you check very carefully all the different components in a PC if you're using a system builder. There are a few different corners that you can cut if you want to save money however and these are as follows. First up is the processor or the CPU and that is CPU overclocking. Now if you overclock your processor it can actually become quite a costly thing to do because if you get a third party cooler and you get a motherboard that's specs to actually overclock your processor and you buy a processor that's overclockable that does start to amount to quite a bit of extra money. So if you use a stock cooler, you use a non overclockable processor and you use a motherboard that's not quite as high end and doesn't support overclocking then you're actually going to save yourself a bit of money. So if you don't think you need to overclock then don't pay for overclocking features that you won't ever use. Next up it's the power supply. How much wattage do you need? Well you probably don't know. This is why you should use a power supply calculator and I've left one in the description below that will actually tell you how much power you need. There's no point paying for wattage you don't need. And likewise if you want to save yourself a bit of money and aren't so fussed about cable management then you can get yourself a standard non-modular power supply and those two things will save you a bit of money. There's no point using wattage you don't need and there's no point having a modular power supply if you don't mind spending an extra 30 minutes tidying up your case if you want to save an extra 10, 15 pounds or of course dollars. Now there are definitely corners that you shouldn't be cutting. Make sure you plan what you're going to use your computer for in a few years time. Make sure that if you want a second graphics card then your entire system will support that. Likewise if you're maybe getting an ITX board then you will only have room for a graphics card and nothing else. So if you want a sound card then you'll have to get a USB one or you just won't have space for a PCIe one just because you haven't planned properly. So make sure your PC will be able to do everything you want it to do now rather than worrying about it later and you've got to upgrade a few different stuff that you didn't want to upgrade before. And finally make sure you get yourself a SSD, a solid state drive. Normally my advice used to be unless you're on a tight budget you know get an SSD but if you're on a really tight budget I understand it's not really 100% essential but nowadays SSDs really are very cheap. You can get a 120 gigabyte one for about 35, 36 pounds, probably about 50 dollars a you know, I haven't looked that one up, but the point is they are so cheap, there is realistically no excuse why you shouldn't be getting one anymore. They completely transform your PC into something that is so much quicker and so much more responsive. You need to make sure you get an SSD because you really would be missing out if you don't get one. But how do you actually go about choosing your parts? Well, the first things I'd say to look at are the processor and the graphics card. Look at your graphics card at the very first thing. Aim to spend about 25% of your budget on your graphics card. And of course look at different reviews and I'm talking about proper reviews rather than customer reviews because customer reviews tell you whether they like the product, it doesn't really give you a comparison against other products. So look at reviews and they will tell you the sorts of frame rates you'll be getting at different resolutions. Pretty much it's just a case of choosing a graphics card that will run the games you want at settings you are happy with. Once you've done this you can move on to the processor. And the processor is pretty much a case of go for more of an entry level one like the Pentium K or the FX6300 if you're on more of a mid range or budget machine or look at getting an i5 if you are serious and want to spend a little bit more on a high end gaming machine and then those processors will complement the graphics cards well and won't bottleneck your system. Now at this point you've pretty much chosen the stuff you need that's going to dictate how your games run so it's just a case of picking everything else up. The next thing to do is the case. 
Now the case is pretty important because obviously you are going to be building in this if you're building and either way whether you're building it or getting it built for you you are going to be looking at it pretty much every single day so it's important to get one that matches your style and is one that you like. Now you want one that's the right form factor so pick a size if you want it to be pretty big it's going to be really nice and easy to build in especially if you haven't built a PC before. If you want something that's quite small, is quite portable, then obviously you can get one that's a little bit smaller. But of course the smaller you go, the less you'll be able to fit in it. Once you've looked at, again, a couple of reviews, and I'll say that one last time, pretty much every component, look at reviews. Once you've chosen your case, it's really important to note down the motherboard form factor, because this will decide which motherboard you should be getting. Now choosing your motherboard is actually quite a simple thing to do. You've got your case's form factor, so if it's an ATX, you're going to want it to get an ATX motherboard, whereas if it's MATX or ITX, you're going to want to make sure that matches up. Likewise, you're going to want to get one that matches your processor socket, so it all works properly. Once you've got all that information, it's just a case of picking one that you like the look of, one that performs well in reviews, but of course, they all perform pretty similarly these days, but more importantly, one that has all the features you want. If you are after a multi-GPU setup, like Crossfire or SLI, make sure that it's supported. Make sure it's got all the ports you want on it. And other than that, it's just a case of having one that you like the look of. Once you've got your motherboard sorted, then you need to look at RAM. And RAM is actually pretty simple. I recommend eight gigabytes for pretty much anyone. If you're gonna be doing video editing or use, using a lot of different high intensity applications at the same time, then you should look at getting 16. But me personally, I'm still on eight gigabytes and obviously I do all these videos, so I don't think you'll need any more than eight gigabytes, but I wouldn't go much lower than that either. Unless you wanna spend loads of money, look at getting 16, 1600 megahertz RAM or 1866 megahertz RAM because anything higher than that, you're not really gonna see much performance gain and your motherboard might not even support it. Of course, if you're on a higher budget, then you can look at branching out to faster RAM, but it's not really necessary. The power supply is also quite a simple thing to choose. You just need to use the PSU wattage calculator that I've left in the description below, and that will tell you the sort of wattage you need. Then you need to decide whether you want a modular power supply, which will make it easier to tidy up your case, or a non-modular power supply, and then you just need to buy one that's from a reputable brand. Some will be quieter than others, some of them might do different things, but realistically, their sole job is not to blow up and to power your rig. So as long as they do both those things, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Next up, it's drives. Make sure you get an SSD. If you want, you could just have one large solid state drive and that will do everything. It will store your games and it will run Windows. But the main thing is that Windows is running on a solid state drive. So if you wanna get a smaller one and then get a normal spinning hard drive as well, that is the cheaper option and that is the option that most people will do. As long as Windows is on your SSD, you are going to have a nice, quick, responsive system. As for DVD drives, well, if you need to play DVDs or write DVDs or of course Blu-rays, then yes, you should get one. But note that these days, Windows you can install off a USB drive, all you need is the serial code and of course the USB drive, so it's not actually essential anymore. And it's only, they are cheap, but it's only necessary if you kind of think it's gonna be necessary. That's it for the hardware, all you need now is the OS, and it's pretty much a case of Windows 8.1 every single time. Windows 7 is arguably the better operating system according to some people, but I don't agree with that at all. Especially as we're moving now into like a 4K world, there are a lot of features that Windows 7 just can't match. Things like scaling, but also I just think the UI actually within the desktop is a bit cleaner and it does run and boot faster. But you're not gonna notice much difference between 7 and 8, really. It, as they all play your game, so you don't need to worry about that. But make sure that Windows is included if you buy a PC that is system built, and make sure you don't forget it, because if you get all your parts and don't have a copy of Windows, then you're a bit stuffed. And that is everything you need. I hope this video has been useful. I've kept it quite simple, but realistically that is because building a PC and choosing the parts is actually fairly simple. All you need to do is make sure that all your parts are compatible and make sure that you've looked at all the reviews for all the different parts so that there's no duff parts in your machine and you know they're all gonna perform well. If you've liked this video, hit the like button and let other people know it's a video worth watching. Likewise, if it was pretty poor and you weren't keen on it and you just want it to end, hit the dislike button, but either way, leave a comment in the, co I was gonna say comment in the description below, that's not right. Either way, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments section below. 
And if you're after part five, which is going to be all about, well, it's kind of a bit sad really because it's the last part, and that's pretty much all about getting your gaming PC up and running, making sure it plays all your games, and it's just a case of how do you actually go from getting PC to actually playing games. So stay tuned for that next week. Well, I say next week, it might be up now, and if it is up, click here, and that will take you straight to it. If you want to see that straight to your feed, hit the subscribe button. Likewise, for other PC gaming and technology videos, hit the subscribe button, you'll get them straight to your home feed. Thank you very much for watching this video. As always, guys, I really do appreciate it. We're hitting good numbers now, so I'm very happy with how the channel's going. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, share the video, blah, 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 and I will see you in the next video. Either way, leave a comment in the, in the, in the description below to let others know whatever your questions are, and I will answer... No, that's poor, isn't it?